Hi, this is Shane from SEQ Campers Sunshine Coast. This is how to use an E-Class. So I just want to do a quick walkthrough. This is a little bit of a handover video for someone who doesn't live here and can't come and have the experience at SEQ Campers Sunshine Coast. So this is how we use our E-Class. We're going to give you the Treg coupling. So that C will go on your vehicle. You take the ball off your vehicle and you put the C coupling for the Treg on there. Pin goes through. We always cross our chains. So make sure you cross your chains when you hook up to the vehicle. Anything over two ton has a breakaway. Attach this to one of your D shackles. If you need to make it shorter, you can loop it on itself and we can do that as a breakaway for our electric brakes. Now this could pull out. If this pulls out, you can hear the brakes are on. You just need to put it back in. So let's just have a look at that again. So this guy pulls out here. And that's our breakaway there. Don't be afraid. You could just put it back in. So that one's going to go back in. How we set up our electric brakes. Right now they're across, so the brakes are on. We release that. That's now moving. I can now push that brake button. It makes noise. So if it moves, I can just push that. It's going to stop. Move it a little more. Stop. To lock the handbrake on, one touch parking brake. What we're going to do is push the button, build up pressure, lock it off. So I've locked it off. That won't move. That will hold pressure for up to two to three weeks. Any long-term storage, always chalk the wheels. We do have a reversing camera set up on this one. The screen and everything for this is inside the cupboard. We've got the arc jockey wheel. Remember that that jockey wheel handle does um, have an extension on an E-class and it does come off. That's our, our jockey wheel handle. To put this away, we pull the handle, swing it away. It can be adjusted up and down as well. So remember there's three settings on that and we wanna make sure that you are using that at the right setting. Don't have a lot of that pole sticking out. We wanna make sure that that's always a bit lower and that's our jockey wheel. Anderson plug for charging, charging off your vehicle. And we've got the small seven pin round large on here. Now with this one, what we have done, this is electric brakes. So we have an electric brake unit attached to this vehicle. The hardwire unit is good and is a product that can be used on a large van like this. It comes with a controller, it's wireless and goes into the vehicle. So this E-Class here, set up by SCQ Campers and Electric Brakes, we have a brake controller designed in here. You can also run it on an app, so we can run our electric brake controller on the app from your phone to adjust the strength of your electric brakes. So great product there, let's have a look inside. Now on here we have airbag suspension. In the locked position or the closed position, these are both locked. To use our airbag suspension, we're going to then open those and we can see we've got two gauges here. Let's just level this caravan. We're gonna push one up, it's gonna make some noise. Now what we have here, I have them open. Let's put the other one down. We can see the two minutes and we can see it leveling off. We're at an awkward campsite right now. So we have one level down, one level up. This is our pressure in our holding tank. So we have a holding tank there. We can put some more air up and down. Now what is gonna happen here is when we leave camp, we do have to set both airbags up and they need to be even. They need to be a visual even um, exchange. Um, we don't have to rely on those two needles being even. They're only a guide using them um, making sure that the airbags are visual. Now this has a DC-DC booster on it. This also has a 2000 watt inverter. We've got 330 amps of AGM batteries on this one. We've got a 15 amp lead. So we do require a 15 amp lead to charge this. That is our inside front box of the Kimberly E-Class. Airbag suspension. We can see that the silver is quite low. We've lowered this side. You can see that one there. Can we go airbag up? Now right there, you can see the airbag going up. Thank you. Now that one is somewhere in the middle. We can see that that one is now uh, 30 to 50 mil off the bottom. Never run your airbags right down at the bottom. We always want them to be at least a little bit more in the middle. There's 120 mil range in your airbags. So this is low for camping, but we want that to be the silver to show in the middle. Um, and we want to actually have enough clearance there 
that we can get our hand underneath this guard. Using your keys in a, key, in a Kimberly Cruiser. Now we've got a few seat keys here. One of them is gonna be for our front box is lockable. We also have a door key here. Now, quite often people say this is very hard to open. That's because the seal is very difficult. So you might have to push on the door to open that up. The seal is holding there. This one is our passage lock. What's gonna happen, we turn it sideways, the handle locks. This one is our deadlock. We want to lock that. I'm actually gonna go and turn it backwards. And that's a deadlock, there's a bolt that goes through there. Let's just try and open that up. Again, we're gonna open that guy up. We can see that here's our deadlock, and that's the lock there that we want to use and move when we close up and lock it at night. Our other keys here, we do have a small key for locking this outside kitchen. So there's an outside kitchen little key there. Then we have keys here for the cassette. So there is keys here on the cassette on this unit. Now this one turn open. This one is paneled off. The reason it's paneled off is because we have a waterless toilet inside there. So that's a bit of a look at our keys on this side. We also will have a water tank key for our water fillers. Now when we open this one up, we open, turn sideways. This one has an outside fridge. So we do have a 12 volt fridge that controls there. Weber barbecue, two handles. So this guy comes, opens up there with the two handles and then can go away like that. We then have this one here, opens up and folds out with the two pieces here. And that's our kitchen there. We do need a bucket or anything underneath. We've got hot and cold water here, little USB. And there's a camera screen that goes with our camera um, on the back there. We've also put another merit plug in here, inside outside stereo, inside outside speakers. Through there, there are lights here as well. So you've got an outside light and there all the lights are on the button, push button there. We'll close that up. And that's a look at the keys and the outside kitchen of the Kimberly Cruiser. Having a look at our water tanks on the Kimberly Cruiser. So we have a little 40 liter tank here that captures our shower water. Now we can open that up, drain our shower water. And if we had an electric toilet, we'd actually use that water to flush the toilet. Then we do have our drinking water. So we've got um, a, a 70 liter drinking water and 120 liter general water. So gray water, general 120, 70 drinking. Two water pumps, two tanks there. Um, then up here we have our front gray water tank. This one is gonna capture just our sink water. So we've got another one for sink water um, here at the front. Make sure you do empty this regularly. It'll keep weight off the front of the cruiser. And that's a look at the Kimberly water system. On this side, we've got 11 liters of diesel. This will run our diesel hot water system and our diesel room heater. We've also got two jerry can holders, petrol or diesel in there, and then we can close up our box. Please remember when we close this up that we do use the bungee on the side. That's just gonna help pull the seal down at the back, keeping that nice and clean and tidy. And that's a look at the front diesel system. We've now opened the door. There is a catch here on the bottom of our door. So what we do, have on this one if we come down here have a little bit of a look we've got a pin to secure our stairs but we also have a catch under here to grab the bottom of the door so just remember that catch is under there to lock it in and there is a little spring load you do have to make sure it's on the side right down here where my thumb is it's important this is really there's a spring load on the side there to undo that catch so please be aware that that will be um, something when you open that door. If it doesn't open, the lock under there is engaged. Thank you. So looking inside the E-Class. Now there are some buttons along here. First, what we're gonna do is turn the lights on. So I've got a little press button for this light on this side, and I've got little press buttons up here. They're black dot. One for the Razorback lighting behind me, two for the lights in here, and three for my lights outside. So we've got three little buttons right there for our, our setting up here. Let's look at the electrics here. We've got a TV that's mounted here, and this TV's into a coax with a jack antenna. That's your little antenna control, so that little white jack antenna is gonna trim that. We've got a Sirocco fan here. Now, this Sirocco fan is very um, adjustable, and we can set it up like that. There's a button on the side here, one button to start, one, two, three, and then the fourth time you press it is off. It also has a timer on it. 
So we've looked at that here. Now with the electrics as well, we've got um, a diesel, uh, we've got a uh, air conditioner. It can only work off 240 power, so generator or shore power. We've got a diesel cooktop inside. Let's turn on the diesel cooktop. Here's our electrics. So across here, DC outlets are 12 volt plugs. These are called a merit plug. They're a very a good um, 12 volt plug. We've got water pumps, water pump one and two for the two water tanks there. Then we've got a fan. This fan should always be on. It's gonna blow air out when we're using our microwave, which is 240 power um, or inverter and when we're using our cooktop. Always have this fan on. Also, it's gonna help cool off the fridge. So for hot weather, use the fan. To turn on our diesel cooktop, we're gonna to just touch the top button. One button click, this is gonna come on. Now, that yellow light comes on, that is our unit um, heating up. My best advice is to always come along and turn on one, turn it up to number six, then press the button, it's now heating up. Like an electric element, it'll take a few minutes to get hot, um, and that's heating up the main dash. So just up here, we've turned on the diesel, and what's happening there is that main cooktop here is getting hot. Um, it goes across to here. The simmer plate is this second one. Um, this is just gonna be like for um, simmering dishes. This one is going to be for boiling water. Let's go down here to the last one. Our last one here is for our diesel um, hot water and again we're just going to press the flame button to wake it up and then we're going to press the flame button one more time it now gives me a 29 minute default that's for my hot water so with that little triangle trying uh, arrow that means that my um, hot water is working it takes five minutes to get hot and it's going to turn itself off in 29 minutes you can always adjust the minutes by going up and down that's my diesel hot top, uh, hot plate cooktop and my diesel hot water the last one here on our electrics, we just can touch this. One of these is gonna light up the screen. This this E-Class e unit has a temperature a clock. It has my battery state of charge, so that's looking pretty good. 12.7 volts. Remember, 11 and a half volts is an empty battery. It has my amps. We're using now 20 amps, because we've turned on all the lights, fridges, we've got that hot water running. That will come down as I turn some of those diesel appliances off but we're using 19 amps right now. Please always check when you plug in that you'll see that right now it is discharging. We can see discharging, my battery's going down and I'm using 19 amps. 12 volts is good, 11 and a half volts is empty. Then we've got two water tanks and you can see my water tanks are reasonably low. We're ready for shipping um, and this is ready to go. Let's open up a fan hatch here. Now we've got these in the ensuite as well. They're a manual fan hatch, open it up. Then we've got an in, so we can do in on high, an in on medium, or we can do out as well. So exhaust, exhaust fan here for running this um, when, as a cooktop. But right now we've got that blowing some fresh air in. Look at the other electronics. Remember that this guy here is going to work on the inverter. The controls for the inverter are actually down here. Now let's just have a quick look at that right there on the end. I've got my battery charger. This is my 240 battery charger. So when I'm plugged in, I wanna see that glowing. This is my 2000 watt inverter. To turn it on, I'm gonna press the power button. Long press on the power. It's gonna show me my battery voltage and it's gonna say green, I'm good to go. So I've got 12 volts there. Now what we're doing, all the power points are live. The microwave is live. Everything is live off the inverter when that's on. Now what it is, if I'm not using a power point, not using the microwave, please power that down, turn that off. That will save power. That's always gonna use up to two amps, just trying to be on standby. Your 2000 watt inverter, make sure the power is off when you're not using the 240 plugs to save power. Having a look at our fridge, it does have bungees here to lock it for travel. Remember it squeezes down, so we give it a squeeze, we pull that down. We can look and we've got our little freezer here. We've got the controls for our fridge. So right now, the only way to turn the fridge on and off is through that dial. Set around four or five on your control and lock your bungees when you're done. So that was a look there. Now inside here, we do have the same fan hatches there, diesel hot water. We do have our two little bungees, so a bungee to hold our shower screen back. Please make sure when you're ready for travel that we do put our shower screen back. We do have a bungee up here for our door as well, so making sure our door is bungeed back. 
The other thing I'll tell you is our windows. When we open our windows, a magnetic screen, they're gonna open like that. And what they do is when you pull them closed, you pull that button down there. To open them, turn the handle, press the button, turn the handle, out, one click, locks in. Two clicks, locks in, three clicks, locks up. Don't go too far, we could pop that window out if we tried to just push really hard up. All we have to do is go past the click and that'll come back down. So whichever size we have it, the nice one at that level, having the windows open, still keeps the rain out. And we can put that back down, we can close up. What a nice breeze we get in here. What a cross breeze. Open those windows up, fan hatches there. We've got overhead cupboards here. So the overhead cupboards are really handy. We'll just have a quick look in there at those. We've talked about the aircon. Lights in here, again, there's a little button. So just having a quick look in here. We've got a little button there for the shower light, little button for these lights, and there's one more little button for our uh, ensuite light here. So cupboards over top, diesel hot water. Remember that the hot water comes from our 120 liter tank. Cold water comes from our drinking water, so 70 liter tank. Shower, everything comes from the general 120, hot and cold. But this one is with the water filter, so cold water brushing our teeth. Now in here, we've got our little tab down and we can pull out our washing machine. So we've got our little two and a half kilo sphere washing machine here. Now most often there's a shut off valve here to stop the water running through. So if you're wondering why this isn't working, there is a shut off valve right there, um, uh, stopping that water. Also it needs power and water goes into that gray tank there. So that's our little washing machine here. Now what we can do with this one is we've got two valves over by our water fill and those water fill we can control the water going to these tanks. Down there is our waterless toilet. Let's just have a quick look at this. So this waterless toilet here has liquids and solids. So we pop that open. We can take the liquids out the front. We take that for a bit of a walk. We can empty that every two or three days. With the toilet there, we can then slide this off the back. What's gonna happen there? I'll just disconnect my hose and we slide that off the back. Using our core peat block or peat moss, we'll see if we throw one in here and we'll put that in. What's gonna happen is that peat moss will go into a bucket with three liters of water. It'll swell up and we put it in, it'll fill that up halfway. Then we're gonna use that and we're gonna spin it with put, turning it on and off with the little dial there. So I'll show waterless toilet operation. So when we do want to spin the mixer, so every time we do finish using it for a number two, first press the middle button. And what's gonna happen there, it's connected to power. So that little light does come on. What's happening here now, for number two, we do open this up and use it, and it's now spinning that little handle down there. So I would leave that on for five minutes and let that spin. Um, generally, it's about 10 turns that we're gonna do after number two. And number one, liquids gets caught in the front and liquids goes out here. Air is connected there, so it's blowing air out constantly and your power is connected here. Power to the wall, power to the toilet. So that's a little look at our waterless toilet. I'll leave that on for five minutes after use and then we can come and turn that off. Um, again, just pressing the main button. I can play with the timer, but it is um, generally just an on-off use. And that's a look. Looking underneath, there is an egg here. We do want to make sure that the legs are down, um, just in case if there was ever two people inside the cruiser, we don't want to put that much weight on the back. Drop the legs, use our handle, and wind that down. You can also use a 19 mil socket with a cordless drill to run that down. Always put the legs down if you're not attached to the vehicle.